Meanwhile, the attack in France is one of the worst in Europe since the 2005 London bombings, which was also linked to al-Qaeda. So how did the Bush White House react when back then, and how is it different from this administration's response to France and terror in general? Jillian Turner served in the White House under, on the Security Council under both administrations, and she joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So from your point of view and inside perspective, what do you say? Um, in the immediate aftermath of attacks like this on our allies, the reality is that the United States has already been forced into a defensive position. As a result, we're facing a limited array of bad options to choose from. Uh, we can ex express solidarity with our allies, condemn the terrorists. We can amp up security uh, in London in 2005. That meant at uh, public transit stations. And we can also, you know, increase our sort of intelligence coordination with our allies. But the problem there is that these are very short-term defensive moves. What's really needed, um, which is something uh, that I think the intelligence community has done a great job here at home with, is longer-term preventive measures. Hmm. So the White House is now convening something called the Summit on Countering Violent Extremism. We just got the press release minutes ago from the White House. Uh, I'm going to put up part of it on the screen here. Through presentations, panel discussions, and small group interactions, Participants will build on local, state, and federal government, community, and international efforts to better understand, identify, and prevent the cycle of radicalization to violence at home in the United States and abroad. It goes on like that in bureaucratic speak, as you can tell, but the words it doesn't include, remarkably, are Islam and Muslim. You would have no idea reading that, that there was any connection at all between the violence in France around the world and a specific religion. Why? I mean, that's not surprising to hear. I think it's been an administration-wide stance to not use the ra phrase, excuse me, radical Islam when we're talking about the terrorist threat. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me to hear that in an event like this, you know, that's not a headline. Um, but I think it's important here, uh, especially in the wake of the 13-year war we're winding down in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, the war on terror, that we are very clear, uh, both the administration and with any kind of national dialogue we're going to undertake, who our adversaries are. Radical Islamists uh, from Africa to the Middle East have been very clear about defining who we are. So I think that as a retaliatory position, it's important we do the same. And clearly you're an insider, you have an insider's perspective on this, and you say there is, seems to be a blanket policy on this. We're not going to call it radical Islam, and the, that's what is behind this. Why? What's, what's the point? Why, why do it this way? I'm, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I know that from everyone, from the president through the press secretary, um, there's a point made to not use the phrase radical Islam. I would be lying if I claim to understand why. Okay. And what about the idea of cutting military under this administration, cutting resources when threats seem to be increasing? Yeah, defense cuts uh, with sequestration as well as intelligence community cuts. That has been the defining feature of the intelligence community in this administration. They've suffered tremendous budget cuts, um, and as well as budget cuts also um, sort of um, limits on their scope, uh, uh, so their sort of intel uh, gathering and analysis capabilities uh, by way of the budget, but also by way of legislation and presidential directives that indicate what they are and are not allowed to do in the name of protecting the homeland. So, Jillian, the, the president has been agitating for the closing of Gitmo since he ran for Senate um, in 2004. Uh, it looks like they're finally moving toward that. How perilous do you think it is for the United States to release the remaining 150 or whatever prisoners back into the world? I believe it's a dire uh, threat to national security, the release of these prisoners. Uh, the problem is that it's really a black and white issue, or as sort of political scientists would call it, a zero-sum game, where you've got uh, civil and human rights on the one hand, and national security and homeland security on the other hand. Any advantages given to one in this instance are going to detract from the other. And the administration has really uh, decided to pursue this issue from the optic of human and civil, uh, and civil rights. So uh, in certain cases, the release of these terrorists is actually occurring at the expense of U.S. national security, both at home and abroad. Yeah, we've heard the term low risk 
for the release of some of these folks back. 30% recidivism rate for these folks uh, returning to the battlefield. Low risk is what they were uh, claimed that these folks who uh, massacred uh, many in France over the past week were also labeled. Um, Jillian, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Brand for your new Fox contributor, I think. So we'll be seeing you again. Yeah, Congratulations. Thanks.